Hello. Uh, to use the planisphere, because you're going to need to use the planisphere for this planisphere lab, uh, this is your planisphere uh, called the Night Sky uh, by a fellow named David Chandler. Basically, what this does is it shows you what the sky looks like at various on various days at various times of the day. And so the way that you use it is, if you want to figure out what the sky is going to look like, then what you would do is you adjust it until the day that you're interested in looking matches the time that you're interested in looking. And so you would, for example, if you want to go out in, in say, uh, October 1st at 10 p.m., you would adjust this until it says October 1st, so you adjust it until October, October 1st at 10 p.m. And then this would be roughly what the sky looks like. So if you want to face north, okay, so north, you hold it where north is at the bottom, and this would be the sky that you see. That little grommet right there uh, in the middle, that is going to be the north star. So you would hold it up here. That's the way the sky would look like at north. Uh, uh, so you would see, for example, you'd see the little dipper kind of goes off to the, to the left of the north star. Okay. Uh, and then if you turn this to where east is at the bottom, that's going to be the sky off in the east. So you can hold that there, and you would say, hey, low in the sky is a star. Aldebaran, which is rising in the east, at 10 p.m. October 1st. Okay. Now, if you adjust it to 11 p.m., you notice that star is higher. Okay. Now, that's the basic idea of how you use it. If you want to face what the sky looks like in the west, you turn it to where west is at the bottom. That's the sky that you would see. If you want to know what it looks like in the south, turn it where south. Turn it on the back side. So that's the sky to the south. So if I have it at October 1st at 10 p.m., I see that the constellation Grus is to the south down there. Okay, and so that, that's basically how you use this thing. Uh, the star Aldebaran, if I rotate this until that star is right there on the horizon, notice that that's east, that's north, so that's northeast right between the two. Between northeast and east is east-northeast. So that star is rising in the east-northeast. Now, it's not rising at 10 p.m., but if I look and see, if I adjust it to where it's on the horizon, I would see that, that this is about 9... Uh, about 9, 10 p.m. or so, that it's rising on October 1st. If I look at 10 p.m., I see that it would be rising at 10 p.m. on uh, September uh, 17th or so. And so that's, that's, again, this is how you'd use this. Uh, uh, so, that, that's kind of, so you can adjust it to where you get the time of day. Okay, uh, and then you can see here. Now, here's an interesting thing. If you're facing north, east is to your right, west is to your left. But if you turn around and face south, now think about it. You're facing south. East is to your left. And west is to your right. So east and west are reversed on the back compared to the front because that's the difference between facing north and facing south. And so that's, that's uh, another little, little, little thing here about this. Okay. And so, uh, again, you have the stars. You have the constellations that are on here. Uh, and and uh, uh, that's that's the the basic sort sort of deal here. Okay. Uh, one other thing you're going to need to know about that is that on the star wheel, okay, one of the exercises they have you do is to look for the star Kokab. Kokab is part of the uh, uh, part of the Little Dipper. Kokab is the star at the opposite end of the Little Dipper from the star Polaris. Polaris is the North Star. 
North Star's right going to be where the grommet is. Okay, now, in old versions of this uh, planisphere, it marked cocab on there. Uh, in the version they've been putting out for the last couple years, it has not marked cocab. So if you get an old one, it probably says cocab for that star. If you have a new one, it doesn't. So I'm just telling you because the lab actually asked what direction cocab. Cocab is that star right there. So you get the little dipper right here. Cocab is that star right there at the end of the little dipper. So you look at it and and in that case, it's going to be left of, of the, the, the North Star. And if you turn it like that, it's straight up for the North Star. And if you turn it like that, it's to the right of the North Star. Okay. And so, so, so again, you know, uh, that, that's, that's going to be uh, um, uh, something you ought to know about and pay attention to. Okay. Uh, all these different stars are marked on here, straight overhead, be right in the middle. Uh, you also are going to be able to use the planisphere to go out at night when it's clear and be able to identify stars and constellations. So you can take it out at night and identify stars and constellations. I'll talk more about that later, uh, and I'll try to have maybe a, a live session or something in which uh, I take my computer into the backyard, and then you all, can, you all can tune in. I can say, okay, now let's all face in a certain direction and look up and see a particular star. Okay, and I'll try to pick the bright stars you can see even from light polluted skies. And so, uh, but that's one of the cool things about doing astronomy. Uh, and students in, in years past have always told me, hey, I really like the idea that I have learned how to tell the name of this star or that star. You know, one, one of my former students once was saying he was out with his friends and he looked up and, and, and there was a big bright star and he named the star and all his friends thought that was really cool. And he thought, well, yeah, that's actually kind of cool. And I, I didn't realize I'd learned that. Okay, now, when, we, when, when we're in person, it's pretty straightforward to, to learn this. Doing it remotely is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So I'm going to be trying to teach you remotely how to do that. So this is going to be, you know, kind of a learning curve for both of us. And like I said, I'm going to try to try to get out and do it. One of the first things we want to do is learn how to use this. Okay. So one of our first labs is going to be learning how to use the uh, uh, learning how to use this thing. And so uh, I want you to be able to. to uh, 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 learn to use it. So that's the first lab. Then we'll get to go outside and use it live, or you can do it on your own going outside using it live, because one of the labs you're going to be doing over the course of the semester is going out, looking up, and identifying stars and constellations. This is your fantastic tool to do that. Now, I will also admit Stellarium also allows you to figure out what the sky looks like on different days, different times of day. So why would you want something like this? Well, for Stellarium, you need your computer. Now, in astronomy, you're outdoors at night, and if you've got this and you're working around at night and you accidentally drop it, you just pick it up and reuse it. Whereas if you are using your computer and you drop it while you're trying to look at the sky, then you've got to go buy a new computer. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so this thing, you know, it's very durable. I mean, you can bang it, and, and, and it, it's very difficult to break. It's not that expensive anyway, but, but it's, it's a straightforward sort of tool uh, uh, for using the sky, learning the sky. Uh, and even though we now have apps on the phone, we got computers and so forth, a lot of amateur astronomers will still buy something like this because it's really easy, easy to just quickly you know, do something and get a rough idea what the sky looks like. And, and if you see a constellation or a star, you can go out and adjust this. Okay, so that's what that is. Okay, and, and so uh, it's, it's really, really nice that way. And so it, it is a nice tool. For using it at night, remember you're going to need to use the red flashlight so you don't lose your dark adaption. For the lab that I have posted, then you don't need to use the red light. You just, you know, use it in the classroom. Okay. So that's the basic idea here, uh, 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 and, and so that's that's what we got. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna post a couple more things here for you, uh, uh, tools to help you uh, 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 figure this out. But you know, 
the the lab is I've posted is going to, and this video goes with that lab, so that's going to help you help you uh, figure out how to use it.